Thank you. My name is Thomas Hatch. I'm a professor at uh, Teachers College, Columbia University. I'm also a researcher who studied school systems both in this country and elsewhere. Uh, I'm also an educator and a parent of three um, children here in the New York public schools. Uh, the message I have today is fairly straightforward. We have to be realistic about what it will really take to make improvements at every level of the system, um, and, we, and that's going to require all of us, those both inside and outside the system, outside of education, to figure out how to work together, whatever our political and personal differences. So, for example, considerable time and energy today is spent in partisan debates about policies that often focus on individual teachers, recruiting more of them, or finding better ways of evaluating. But it should be no surprise that individual teachers matter so much when in comparison with higher performing countries, we have a weak system overall, and one in which there are massive inequities in what academics call technical, human, and social capital. So in answer to the question, what does it really take to improve schools, I argue that it takes much more than a focus on individual teachers. It takes a system to raise every child, and that system depends on a long-term commitment to the development and equitable distribution, not only of effective educators, but also high-quality educational resources and the powerful social relationships that enable those educators to use those resources successfully. So let me just mention three ways that we can work together towards such a system. First, we can focus on community development projects, particularly using the building and renovation of school facilities, not only for school improvement, but also for economic and community improvement as well. <coughs> Second, we can shift our focus from recruiting and rewarding individual educators for one year of performance to fostering productive work climates and assessing collective impact over a period of three, four, or five years. And this picks up on some of the previous comments. Assessment systems like those in Finland that sample the performance of groups of students each year, rather than testing every student every year in multiple subjects, not only reduces the substantial cost of testing, uh, it can also create incentives for educators that help to promote collaboration and the development of the collective responsibility and common commitment that's so essential to improving education for all students. Furthermore, we can make visible what students' experiences and work is like in schools. Too often, the only representation of that work and their experience are those test scores, and that's insufficient. One simple way to try and make students' experience in schools visible is to collect stamp samples of students' work and compare the levels of rigor, engagement, and creativity in that work and the kinds of work demanded in high-performing schools, colleges, and workplaces. By creating opportunities to see and discuss students' learning experiences, we can build, begin to build a demand for high-quality teaching for all students. But until we have a real demand for high-quality teaching, almost anything that leads to improved test scores will suffice. Now, we often hear that improving education for all students is the moonshot of the 21st century. But we have to realize that putting a person on the moon is, to a large extent, a technical problem. Uh, but improving our schools is not just a technical problem, it's a human problem, it's a social and a cultural problem. That problem is not just out there, it's in here, it's in each one of us, and that solution to that problem lies with us as well. It lies in our willingness to figure out how to work together over the long term to create a system that works for every single child. Thank you. Thank you.